Without any further ado, of course, we're going to bring him right now, live, 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 the man of the hour, none other than the man himself, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. Welcome. It yeah. is a pleasure to be here. That's what's up. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good to have you on the show. I uh, want to ask you first, out of tradition of the show, what do you want us to call you? Do you want us to call you Devin? Hannibal. Hannibal, Mr. Nicholson, Hannibal, okay. Hannibal. And no problem, no problem. Thank you for coming on to the show. Before we start off, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, NFC Game Boy, to start everything. Well, first, like my uh, host said, thank you for coming on the show. And Hannibal, my question to you is, is that with everything going on with people doing, you know, videos, shoot videos and everything, what do you think is the hardest uh, uh thing to get people to actually watch with so many other people doing videos and, and having their own special, uh, I guess, critique on their videos. What is the hardest challenge of getting uh, people to watch? Videos? I haven't really had any problems getting people to watch our shoot interviews. Our, some of, if not the highest shoot interviews viewed on the Internet on uh, our, the Hannibal TV YouTube channel. So I haven't had any issues getting people to watch them up to this point. I think we do very good quality shoot interviews. We've had some pretty big stars. We're going to have even more big stars as uh, time goes on. And uh, we ask good questions. So we haven't really had any issues of getting people to watch so far. We began doing this only for fun, throwing stock footage we had up here and there. But uh, it just got more and more popular, so now we're doing more shoot interviews. So that's what's going on. Okay. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys, anyone listening to this can subscribe to The Hannibal TV on YouTube or just go to thehannibaltv.com, and all the links are on there. We even have a section on that website of all of our full shoot interviews because uh, – we even post full shoot interviews up to three hours long on YouTube for free, unlike uh, a lot of the other shoot interview companies yeah. do. They usually make you pay for them on uh, right. DVD. Right. My man. Hey, so, and if you really want to say, hey, as a staff, um, Hannibal, we are, we've been fans of your work of Hannibal TV. We've been checking you guys out since you started. So uh, I want to give a shout-out to Bruce Hart, a good friend of ours, and I did some work on his show before, some engineer work, and he always spoke highly of you, too. And, And yeah, and Bruce Hart, we actually recently did a shoot interview with him that can be seen on our The Hannibal TV YouTube channel, and Bruce, of course, was one of my trainers. So, uh, yeah, I've known him for a very long time. Yes. And uh, while we're speaking speaking on Bruce Hart, um, Talk about your training, uh, getting trained by Bruce Hart, and, of course, um, your history with uh, Jacques Rougeau as well. Well, I talk about it a lot in my own shoot interview, shoot interview that's up there on the Internet, but uh, just to briefly go over it, I started training with Jacques Rougeau in Montreal, and then uh, where I was actually trained by Jacques Rougeau and not Kevin Steen, who's now known as Kevin Owens, and apparently he claims that he trained me, um, according to... Oh things that he's been saying that's false and i'm actually going to respond to that uh, directly in a video in my next post on uh, my youtube channel but uh yeah i started with a uh, being trained by jacques rougeau and then i went on to move to calgary and train with bruce hart in the dungeon for about four years after that the training uh was pretty good Other people that were around at that time was Ted Hart, Natalia, uh, Rick Victor, who's now in WWE, Tyson Kidd, Harry Smith, uh, Johnny Devine was also in there. So there was a lot of top talent uh, being trained, and some of them were already trained and were just going down in the dungeon for practice at that time. But uh, it was a good class, and around that time in Stampede Wrestling, there was about four to six events per year. So it was good experience to uh, learning how to become a wrestler. Wow. That's one of the reasons I actually chose to go to Calgary because at that time, which is pretty much the same as now, Jacques Rougeau 
only runs about two or so events a year. So I knew if I wanted to progress as a wrestler, I'd have to go somewhere where you were getting more consistent experience. And it paid off uh, because eventually I ended up getting booked uh, in Puerto Rico full time. And I was there for quite a while after that, earning a living as a wrestler. Now, when, okay. now when, you were in Puerto, when you was in Puerto Rico, Hannibal, were you uh, working under Carlos Colon promotion or were you working uh, um, other indie events in Puerto Rico? I started with Savio Vega's and Victor Quiones' promotion, which was IWA Puerto Rico, which was actually the number one uh, company in Puerto Rico at that time. They were uh, doing far better uh, for live attendance than Carlos. And then eventually I switched to uh, WWC Puerto Rico because they offered me a bit of a pay increase. And uh, in IWA, I feuded mostly with Ricky Banderas and the tag team Thunder and Lightning. And in WWC, I feuded mainly with Eddie Colon and uh, Orlando Colon, who are now in uh, WWE. I forget what gimmick they're up to now, but they've had several different gimmicks as a tag team. But, um, I think I, I think I think a fan is uh, sent this. Okay, a uh, fan Devin said, or uh, actually Devin, ironically, uh, D E V I N said they're the shining stars. I there you uh, go. Yeah, the shining stars. Yeah, the shining stars. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, other Devin. Um, of course, any thoughts uh, on Carlito? I know we we saw some before. Um, Carlito, oh, yeah, yeah we course. actually did a shoot interview with him too. He, I never really wrestled him directly because when I was in WWC, he was actually in WWE for his big run that he had there, but they would still use him on the big WWC shows. And other than brief talk with him, I never really talked to him much. He he keeps to himself pretty much. And yeah. How he is in his shoot interview that he did with us is pretty much how he was in my experience in real life. He doesn't talk much. Yeah, he answers quiet, uh, in very quick questions, keeps to himself. So, yeah. yeah, that's about all the contact I have with him. Friendly enough contact, but I was more fr- uh, friends with his brother. Yeah, yeah okay. Car- Carlito was a good guy. Good guy to us, like you say. Did- you know, standalone guy, nice, answers questions quick, stays to himself, doesn't really talk too much. Um, he's not a fan of the Cowboys, I will say that. Any uh, Dallas Cowboys fans listening? <laughs> yeah, because he lives in <laughs> Texas now, I think. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't yeah. a big fan of the Cowboys. He did joke with uh, our media assistant about um, using the Cowboys for Madden on one of the uh, Madden games, I think it was last year. But, um, with that, uh, wrestling in Puerto Rico, of course, in Calgary, in the dungeon, and of course, now you're in Canada. Um, talk about the, the difference um, psychologically wrestling, of course, in Puerto Rico, and then you live in, of course, your promotions in Canada, and then, of course, you come into the States. Uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, I guess at the time that I was there, wrestling was still pretty popular. It's when IWA and WWC each had a company, so there was a total. Each company had four hours of TV a week, so there was eight hours of TV a week. So it was a real boom in Puerto Rico. So we had a little bit of fame on the island, and it was very much a TV product. Uh, Then you go back to Canada, although there is big crowds on a lot of the Great North Wrestling shows that – I wrestle on in Canada. Uh, you're not, you don't have TV every week, let alone four hours of TV every week. So, obviously, the fame is is not there. Uh, wrestling in the states, I've never really wrestled full time in the states. I've only had matches here and there. I actually have a match coming up in Cleveland, October the 29th for Cleveland Knights Championship Wrestling. Uh, that's supposedly going to be a pretty big card. Tyrus is on it. And I think two or three people from Lucha Underground are going to be on that card. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going more into the States as time goes on here because uh, my YouTube channel, The Hannibal TV, is actually more popular in the U.S. than in Canada. So I've been getting a lot more uh, American fans since since I started it. And hopefully one day I'll actually live in the States because I cannot stand the Canadian winters here. They're brutal. Yeah, 
Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I've, mm. uh, I've never been to Canada. Or Game Boy, you've been to Canada, correct? Uh, yeah, I, I've been to Canada before. It was a pretty cool place. Yeah. It's, it's been over 20 years, though. But um, when I was there, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It's great in well, the summer, but the minus 30 degree weather in the winter, uh, it's not very fun. <laughs> let alone driving in two feet of snow. Oh man, I, I, you know we're um, we're located in Baltimore, Maryland, and we we just had a winter uh, last year, which was records. And I, I know talking to Bob Johnson uh, when he called to check on me. I, you know he lives in Canada, so of course he said. Uh, no, what we did with here is nothing. <laughs> Our little blizzard here is nothing compared to Canada's winter. Oh, oh. No. Particularly <laughs> Calgary the because uh, they're located in Calgary, and that's that gets extremely cold, even worse than my area of Canada where I'm in. So. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Thank you for that. Well, hopefully you will uh, at some point. Not, we're not trying to take you away from good old Canada, but. No. Uh, to, to your, uh, <laughs> to your life well, I have a lot of friends state. in Phoenix. I've been to Phoenix like six times, and uh, I want I'll be living there one of these days. <laughs> mm, okay. So, um, with that, to talking to um, work in the states and you know, Puerto Rico and in Canada. Um, one thing I will somebody sent to me. Uh, this I actually week worked in England did. too for a while. Oh, how did you like England? England was all right. Uh, not really my style of wrestling. It's really a show style of wrestling there. Uh, I wrestled, who did I wrestle there? Doug Williams, uh, Mason Ryan, who was in WWE briefly. Yeah. Uh, Quebecer Pierre was there at that time, and so was Rene Dupree, who we just did a shoot interview with. So uh, the trips were bad because you'd wrestle seven days a week, sometimes twice a day, and sometimes the drives were like six hours apart. So it was a lot of being cramped up in a van. Uh, but, yeah, I'll probably be back to uh, England again in the near future, too, because I've uh, had a lot more popularity in England lately. But back in those days, I was wrestling for All Star Wrestling, which is the main company in England uh, that runs like consistently, and you can live off of working for them. And they they have a really brutal schedule, but it's a lot of wrestling in camps for paid shows. So it's more of a it's less of a sport and more entertainment style wrestling. Where my specialty of wrestling is more of a realistic athletic style. So right. that company may not have been the best suited for me, but there is other companies um, in Europe that I would be well suited for. Hmm. Well, how, how was the food? Did you know, we say Russell. Oh, the food, they the put gravy food. on everything. The food there oh, was awful. <laughs> 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 There's very little low fat stuff that I could find. They put gravy on pizza. They seem to put gravy wow. on everything sausages and very poor quality food. But I'm sure oh, there man. are some places in England that have good quality, but the areas where we were going to was not. And even fast food was. Like triple the price that it is in Canada, so the food was also very expensive. I found. Oh man! Yeah. Well, just like a interesting Game Boy homes for us growing up, uh, people for hot sauce and everything and ketchup. So yeah. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But gravy when you're trying to keep a diet is is not the best. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, what kind of gravy was it, Hannibal? Was it like chicken gravy? Was it brown gravy? Was it brown really gravy, thick, I would like... say. <laughs> well, it was brown. It was brown gravy most most of the time. Oh, we had man. to try that Game Boy, uh, and uh, and 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 honor and shout out to Hannibal. We had to put gravy for a day on everything. <laughs> <laughs> put gravy on soda. <laughs> well, it's so bad that they put it on before they serve it to you. So. And the other thing that I didn't like, you know, like you go to a burger place in Canada or the States, you can just ask for extra patties on your food, and they wouldn't do that there. So, wow. like, you, you could, yeah, so, I mean, for someone that eats a lot of meat, that's annoying that you have to buy, like, instead of just getting extra meat on your uh, whatever you order, it doesn't work that way there. You have to order actual <laughs> double the sandwiches and stuff. Now, 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 Hannibal, did, how how much 
how much more did you have to work out with eating all that gravy in the UK? Or did oh, the gravy God. stick to you? Or well, we were that? wrestling uh, at least once a day, plus I was working out every day, so I was... I was all right. I'm leaner now than I was in those days. In those days, I was closer to 300. Now I'm in between 265 and 275. But uh, I was more, uh, I would say more of a football player's build in those days. Very strong, but more bulky. Now my cardio is uh, better than it's ever been, and I'm still way stronger than your average person. So I think I'm at a good place right now as far as my physique and athleticism goes. But I am going to be in my best shape ever. Uh, I got three matches coming up, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. November 5th, I'm wrestling Rick Steiner uh, for Great wow. North Wrestling in Hawkesbury, Ontario. So that's going to be a huge match for me, and he's a great right. athlete. Then November 6th, I'm wrestling Wes Briscoe, who holds two victories over uh, Kurt Angle, He's also been in uh, TNA in New Japan, so three days in a row of some pretty tough matches, so I'm training really hard for these. I actually already uh, did one workout today, I'm going to be hitting the gym again after I get off the phone with you guys. Hmm. Well, uh, <clears throat> it is great, and we will say we broke a record here in all the years of Under the Mat Radio something we call a plug party, and it's a game boy uh, started the segment where we have all of our, all of the wrestlers, legends, or indie wrestlers plug their appearances. You, Hannibal, within a matter of two minutes, have already plugged all of your events, <laughs> all, of your, <laughs> all of your media appearances, which is great. Normally everybody sends the way to the end, and you did it right off the bat, which is good. So you broke a record here under the Matt Radio. Well, they're always in my head. I'm so pumped up specifically for my match against Rick Steiner. It's going to be a huge match. I mean, that guy is a 10-time world tag team champion, and he actually holds the record at uh, Michigan State for fastest pin in uh, NCAA history uh, for yeah. Michigan. So that's going to be a, a big match for me. So it's always on my mind. Uh, so that's why I'm talking about it so much. Oh, no, it's fine. Because, you know, you, you, you had the flow, and you can talk from whatever you want. And, of course, here at our show, we talk about everything besides wrestling, sports, and pop culture, TV, and movies as well, which we do have some fan questions um, related to that. Um, speaking of, of course, amateur wrestling, a, a quote from Ric Flair from an interview he did um, with the other guys, and, yeah, quote, the other interviewers, uh, he said how most people think that everyone was scared of Scott Steiner, who we met, good dude. But he said, actually, all of the boys was more scared of Rick. I actually learn. heard Bill Watts <laughs> say that, too. Bill Watts says that in his yeah. book, uh, that Bill, that uh, Rick Steiner is actually the tougher of the two. Uh, Scott Steiner might be maybe more of the bully of the two, uh, like flexes his muscle more. But as far as actual who's the tougher fighter, everyone says Rick that I've heard that knows them both. Yeah. So I'm not uh, taking that match very lightly. And I do know Scott. We, He was in Great North Wrestling three times. Uh, got along well with him, but with Rick, I don't know him, never met him. This will be the first time. So all I can do is train and be prepared for it. And, uh, and if we're right, Hannibal, you also did a good shoot interview with uh, Scott as well. I believe it was in your car or in like a van. Yeah, that was one of my first uh, shoot interviews, and we were just driving to a show uh, that he was on that night, and we asked if we could film the questions I was going to, or basically film our conversation, and he was cool with it, so that's how that one was born, and it got a lot of hits, so oh, yeah. that was before we started doing actual shoot interviews for the sake of doing shoot interviews. Um but, yeah, that was one of the big ones because uh, that was right after he had his fallout with TNA and he said a lot of negative stuff about TNA. And he still has his problems with Hulk Hogan, I guess, but he was venting some stuff on Hogan. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that, but those are going to be some questions that maybe Rick will be able to answer for us because uh, we will be doing a shoot interview with Rick Steiner while he's out here. Yeah, we, we definitely can uh 
Definitely can't wait. Uh, uh, speaking of legendary tag teams of of uh, two people who you would think would be more scared of the other, you know, we, we got a chance to interview Booker T before. We just had Steve Ray on our show last month, and um, definitely realized how it's normally in, in life, and the quieter the quieter ones in the tag team tends to be more of the the scarier ones. Booker T, of course, everyone tends to know him. He's more vocal. You talk to Stevie Ray, he like Rick. He didn't talk much for a reason, right? Very, very upfront right. guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody, nobody messes with uh, nobody messes with Stevie Ray. Definitely all kind of guy. So um, there was. A, yeah. I don't know if Batista would disagree with you on that one or not, because I think there was an incident once where uh, Booker T beat up Batista. Yeah, he mildly um, him. Yeah, that <laughs> happened at a SummerSlam, something related to SummerSlam a few years ago. Yeah, uh, like a shoot, some kind of. Uh, pre, they went into a production. room and had a fight. Yeah, yeah, they were filming the the trailer to uh, the SummerSlam event, and there was some something weird that happened between uh, Booker T and Batista. So supposedly they went into a room and uh, settled it where no one could see, but everyone said from what they understood that was there that day, uh, Booker T got the upper hand. So, uh, well, but speak, I, I don't speak. doubt that both of those guys are tough because uh, they're oh, yeah. legitimate uh, street people, from what I understand. Cool. I th- so yeah, cool. I will. Uh, yeah, boy, we can relate. You know, know about the streets and everything. Because uh, yes, I'm considered a street person myself. So uh, I'm yeah. sure they would both fare a lot better than CM Punk in uh, in the oh, UFC oh, fight. <laughs> 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 Round yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, you don't, you don't wait, the you, entire you don't wait till you're 40 to try to start, you know, picking up. That's, that's not the way to go. No. And you don't turn your back on your opponent uh, at any point. And at one point in that fight, he's on his hands yeah. and <laughs> knees, gives his full back to his opponent, which is, I don't care if you're 40, that's a basic thing that you learn in MMA training. Never give your back to somebody. So. If you don't learn that being trained by some of the best trainers in the world for two years, you probably shouldn't be in the UFC. And according to Dana White, he's not going to get another chance in the UFC. And we'll see if he wants to take another beating in another company. I guess only time will tell. You probably see him on Spike TV and Bullet Tour. Probably get his uh, ass whooped again. Yeah. It depends how much he cares about uh like it depends what kind of opponent they want to find for him, how much he cares about embarrassing himself. Because uh, that was a pretty humiliating uh situation that uh, he put himself in. Yeah. It certainly didn't well, do the wrestling industry any favors. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Monday after that fight Ross scored one of the lowest ratings they've had in twenty years. Like, who wants to see people, like, that makes wrestling look terrible that you can't even last one round <laughs> with a with a UFC fighter that's, that was only his second fight in the UFC, so. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> we, we do want to see, uh, give a, give a, uh, we do a lot of shout-outs here on the show, uh, a, a dishonorable shout-out to CM Punk for uh, blocking us because our, our media guy, I think you saw a team, uh, did a poll was just watching the fight is if CM Punk should fight again in UFC. People were of course voting no and he blocked us. Thank you CM Punk for uh, blocking us and not uh <laughs> mad at uh, people telling the truth. And ironically once he blocked us Dana White came on publicly and said he uh, don't think he need to fight in UFC again. So no, uh, CM hey. Punk uh I don't have really any respect for him to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't like him before life. the whole UFC situation, and I like him even less now because I, I just don't understand it. Like, if I had had the best trainers, if I had had the level of training that he had, like, I'd be just an amazing fighter. But unfortunately, I can't afford to train full-time for two years with the best trainers. So it's just sad that, like, he had all of that. And he didn't seem like, I don't so, think he would have done any better if he hadn't trained a day. I don't know about you guys, but he, he didn't really show, he didn't even know yeah. how to sprawl on a double leg attack, yeah. which is like something very simple. You don't wrap your hands around the guy's waist. You control exactly. the head and you grab a wither, exactly. you throw your hips in. So I don't know, it just boggles my mind how bad he did. 
I grew up in martial arts myself. I took Taekwondo, and when I got older, I took uh, Aikido. And I took Aikido for over 10 years. And, you know, I, I watched the CM Punk fight, and I was so confused because the the very first thing he did was run to the opponent. Which I, I didn't even understand. I was I was shocked at that. I was like, why why is he running to him? And it was like when you're in a fight of that magnitude, you're supposed to pace yourself. You know, like especially Brock you're fighting Lester a younger. Did. Yeah, like you you like. know you're fighting a younger, especially a younger, faster, experienced person. You're supposed to pace yourself. He just ran right into him, and he used his momentum to just go ahead and just take him down. And throughout the match, you know, the the various points with the chokes and holes I was watching, I was just I – w- I didn't understand. He said he had all this training and stuff, and he was, I guess, <clears throat> playing trained with the best. Well, you know, either the best are not really the best or you're just really not that good at training. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. But it was an embarrassment not only to, to himself – it was also an embarrassment to the to the sport, and I do agree with that. But I'm glad that it's over, and I hope that CM Punk leaves this one behind him and find whatever the hell he want to do in his future or whatever because, you know, it, it, it seems like he's doing a lot of stuff for attention. And well, the, the moment I heard him say that he didn't have butterflies going into the fight, I knew he was going to lose because exactly. who who doesn't go into a fight without butterflies if you've ever been in a real fight? No matter how confident right. you are, you have to be nervous. Yeah, and you, yeah, because fear. You, it's part you have part to be of, nervous and fearful of, of losing because the fear of losing is what makes you fight. If you don't care exactly. about losing, you're not going to fight hard. So exactly. uh, that's how I that's how I feel with any fight I've been in or any even uh, martial arts fight I've been in. Oh well. <laughs> I'm glad yeah, I'm not the only one that thinks that way about Mr. Punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're not, we're not, we're not big fans of him at all. Um, I, but if he wants to jump up to heavyweight, I will actually fight him at the league minimum six thousand dollars UFC pay. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I would punch a lot harder than Mickey Gall, and I yeah. would be as nice as Mickey Gall was. <laughs> it's um. How, how, how much uh, in this game? How much was it? Did he? Uh, what did he make? Was it five hundred grand? Apparently, he made five hundred grand. Yeah, yeah, he made five hundred grand. grand. Mickey Gall apparently well, made thirty one grand. Round. Yeah. yeah. Not even one round. Five hundred grand plus. He, I'm sure minutes. he made money from his uh, his TV series. You know, they did the four part TV series on him before the fight. <clears> so. Documentary. Yeah. I mean, why are you doing a documentary on what? What have you done? Train. That's boring. <laughs> well, no he wasn't bad, impressive. Wasn't... I actually watched the documentary uh, because I was curious to see what they were doing. And I saw in the documentary that he was training with supposedly very good trainers, but the matches and the live sparring that he had in the documentary, it was obvious that he didn't know what he was doing. So I thought he may have actually been faking that for the documentary to make his opponent like kind of not worry about the fight, but that wasn't the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, but, to, to, to people who may, people who may not know that's listening live now that will listen to the archive footage, um, and someone just hit me up, what is a sprawl? You now me, my background, I'm a former amateur wrestler, and I know, uh, and we'll talk about this too, Hannibal, where you uh, also, also was in the Olympic trials and wrestling. When someone yeah, I was a national you, champion and Olympic trial silver yeah. medalist in uh, yeah. amateur wrestling. <laughs> yes, so then we got uh, wrestling, uh, amateur wrestling royalty. And, of course, uh, two weeks ago we had the great uh, multiple Olympic gold medalist Dan Gable on our show. We also had, of course, Mark I've Schultz had him on the too. show. Too. Yes, yeah, we did see I Dan actually Schultz. met him recently. So, great guy, but, great guy. Yeah, great a, guy he's a, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, right. Yeah. CM Punk probably should have went to visit him, spent some of his money <laughs> training with Gable. <laughs> you would have learned how to sprawl. <laughs> if uh, for, for sprawling, if you don't know what sprawling is, and of course uh, Game Boy knows, I, I've showed him this, and anybody knows. Mm-hmm. If anyone attacks you with their head going forward, they try to shoot the leg. You take all your, your chest, you push the head down, you take your chest, put all your weight on top of the head, and you push your legs back, and you keep sprawling. We used to do 
uh, we used to do um, activities, we used to do sprawling drills. Remember those, Hannibal? We used to have someone shoot your leg and do a double leg and you sprawl. It's basic one on one. It's not even one on one. And the other one on one is you don't wrap both of your your hands around the guy's waist if someone attacks you in a exactly. leg attack. Because then you're <laughs> right? just giving them your legs. Like you learned exactly. that in grade nine wrestling. Right. <laughs> As you said, so, like we drill that in, in high school wrestling. That's a drill yes. that you would dr- drill on a regular basis. So we, if we, his we coaches aren't the teaching him that, it's beyond me. <laughs> we've uh, we've seen the four kids, uh, you know, even before high school, the elementary four kids level, we do, you know, basic sprawls. You got the chicken walk that you do across the mat and do little switch drills. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. moving on from Sam Pump, we don't want to take the whole show time about him. The show right now is about you, of course, Hannibal. Same question from James from Pittsburgh is, I love your look, Mr. Devin. Do you get? Did you get your look with the top hat and the eye paint from a Clockwork Orange? Thank you. Uh, that was actually Billy Graham's suggestion to for me. So I don't know if he got it from that, but that's a great movie. And my level of violence yeah. can reach the violence displayed in that movie. And as you, my my matches are only going to get more violent in the next uh, little while, I believe. Uh, you haven't seen anything from me yet, but uh, no, that suggestion of that was actually Billy Graham, WWE Hall of Famer, who's a friend of mine and a mentor to me, because uh, yes. I had a brief uh, stoppage of wrestling for three years uh, from end of 2011 till the spring of 2014 to take care of my health issues that I had that I'm all cleared to wrestle again now but uh when i came yeah. back billy graham said uh, don't come back with the same look uh and then he sent me uh his idea and then he also gave me the name death dealer he said call yourself hannibal the death dealer and uh go with that dark look because it suits your real personality so that's what i've been doing yeah hmm. we definitely do love the look and you do have a unique look about yourself as well Shout out to the Clockwork Orange, definitely great movie, one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh, um, definitely. It, uh, and Game Boy, I turn over to you. Know, you're the, we're both we're all movie fanatics as well, but I know Game Boy, you're more on the horror aspect. I like horror movies, but Game Boy is the horror buff. Yeah, I'm the horror. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be the horror. <laughs> She's horror. Now, um, with with that, talk about Hannibal, you're transitioning from Billy Graham telling you don't come back with the same look. Uh, what influence did you get as far as your Hannibal character? You know, where did you watch any movies? Was there any TV? Uh, what helped you get into your character and help develop your character to what it is now? Uh, well, I've always been a horror movie fan, but I think I'm just a, kind of a violent person in real life. And I, when I first started wrestling in Stampede Wrestling, I just had a uh, amateur wrestling gimmick, which was based on what Bruce Hart knew about me, I guess, and Ross Hart was also involved in the company at that time. So it was really a kind of a playing gimmick where I was just an amateur wrestling champion type thing. And uh, when I sent my tapes to uh, Puerto Rico, Bushwhacker Luke was the booker there at the time, one of the bookers. It was actually a booking team. But uh, he said, when you really get violent in your matches you said you remind me of how anthony hopkins looks in the movie silence of the lambs and he said at that time i guess i was replacing abyss in puerto rico because abyss had just been signed by tna so they they were just like we want a character similar to abyss you remind us as as, as, of uh, hannibal so we're going to call you hannibal so it it ended up being a very fitting name so Huh. That's how I got yeah. it, and yeah, I just turn like right now in Great North Wrestling, I'm a baby face a lot of the time because the fans just love me here in Canada for the most part, uh, but I am a better heel, and uh, that's why I hope as I continue to wrestle more in other places, I get to be a heel more and have that more vicious side of me uh, come out more then uh, I can really allow it to come out as a baby face. Hmm. All right. Thank you for that. Go ahead, Game Boy. You want to but as I've told many people, it's hard, to, it's hard to be like a, a heel 
when you also help promote events for a company and you can't be a heel to the crowd and then go and ask to put a poster up in the, the guy's store window <laughs> uh, for the next yeah, show right. because when I'm a heel, I'm a full-out heel. So, like, I go all out and people are going to take my take me seriously. So, yeah. Now that's how you're supposed to do it. Got yeah. Well, actually, uh, I was actually did have a WWE contract at one point. It didn't. Something happened, and maybe one day I'll get another opportunity. But the main person that recommended me uh, to be signed at that point in time in 2009 was Pat Patterson. And at that uh, camp that I was signed from, he actually said, "You are the best heel I've seen in years." So I think his recommendation was one of the main reasons I was uh, like offered a contract back then. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is that, that is that is great. So you have Time will tell if they'll take another look at me, but unfortunately, mm-hmm. I'm not on an all McDonald's diet right now. I don't wear like a cut off shirt when I wrestle, so I don't know if WWE is interested in me because I actually look like an athlete. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's Although I do wrong. hold, you know, I actually pinned AJ Styles twice in one night when we wrestled, and now he is the world champion. So when <laughs> AJ Styles was New Japan Pro Wrestling champion, it was a non-title match, but you can look it up on my YouTube channel, The Hannibal TV. Yeah. I actually pinned AJ Styles two times in one night in 2014 when he was New Japan Pro Wrestling champion. So... Oh. I do hold that say, over uh, his head. <laughs> speak, speaking of AJ Styles, uh, we'll let you know. Um, good friend, personal friend of ours. You can check it out on our page mm-hmm. under the Matt Radio, where we had a sit down with AJ. I think it was it was actually four hours at a restaurant, but I think the video was an hour or so. And I had yeah, and, uh, the Game Boy. Uh, Game Boy, you go and tell about your yeah, uh, rivalry with AJ Styles in video games. Yeah, well, man, AJ got real close uh, over the years, and um, we're both big video game collectors, and we uh, we've traded each other video games. I even had fans hit me up to ask me, you know, where do he live, and you know, uh, is there any way we can see him or talk to him and everything? And I have to tell them, you know, out nope. of respect, you know, that's you nope. know, you don't you don't you don't give that type of information out. That's that's very dangerous to him and his family, and to my friendship with him. But um. AJ's a really good guy. Um, we uh, talk video games and stuff a few times and everything. And I, I haven't talked to him in a while now since he's been with the WWE, of course, because of his grueling schedule and everything. But um, he, he's just a wonderful guy. I'm glad that you know you had the chance. Um, good worker, um, very modest, very humble. You know, um, I didn't find him modest or humble in my dealings with him, but he is a good, great uh, wrestler, and he's a very deserving champion and i yeah. hope that he actually has that title for a while because uh i think he's one of the best wrestlers out there whether i like him personally or not uh he's a very good representative of the company yes i, I agree i agree but well, i do have a question for you with you um recording so many videos and stuff do you have some type of uh you know uh I guess regimen or some type of something that you do before you record people, something that you do for yourself. Um, some people, you know, they use a certain type of camera and they only want to use that camera man or that that type of cameraman or, you know, they only want to do it on a certain day. Like uh, uh, some people, like, you know, they don't want to do it spontaneously. They, you know, they got some type of ritual. Get everything out. I guess. Right. Yeah. With me, it all depends on the – I'm not – I'll do them whenever with – I use a variety of camera people, whoever happens to be with me on that particular day, although our production values are getting better. But no, usually I do them uh, before or after uh, professional wrestling events or uh, if we're going to somebody's house. I actually prefer the ones where we meet them on a day when it's not a wrestling event because I find they're less rushed, but a lot of the times, unfortunately... The only time we have with people is uh, in the dressing room before or after their match. So, really, no. Uh, the interviews are pretty easy for me because I've been a 
wrestling fan ever since I was able to talk. So mm-hmm. I've read all the rest, like the majority of wrestling books. I follow all the wrestling news. So I have all the historical information already in my head. It's just a matter of talking to these guys. And most of the people I interview, I already know from be I've been in the wrestling business since uh, 2001. So I know a lot of these guys through working with them over the years. Okay. And, and, and it's already and it's always good, Hannibal, to have when you already have that rapport and relationship with the boys. It makes it that much easier when you're interviewing them. Cause you're oh yeah, I mean my two. I guess my three favorites interviews have been well. Actually, there's been a bunch, but like Honky Tonk Man has been one of my popular interviews, most popular, and I've known him since 2008. Been traveling around with him. Billy Graham, I did three shoot interviews with. Uh, those were very comfortable. The Mountie, I uh, did a great one with him, and that one was completely, it was just us talking in a barbershop. We were getting our hair, hair cut. Funny. So, right. I mean, <laughs> that was one of my favorites because it's just us talking. And then lately, uh, Alain Moussi, I did him. He's uh, the star of the new Kickboxer Vengeance series. Uh, George St. Pierre's in the first one with Batista, yeah, uh, Cain Velasquez. Right. Yeah, uh, I was. We were actually at the pre- the Canadian premiere of it last week. Um, oh, but yeah, it? I was. Yeah, I didn't get to. It was good. Actually, it if was you're, actually pretty good. If you're an I, MMA I, fan or a wrestling yeah. fan, you'll like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it. It was constant check it out. action. Constant action. But the second, they're already, they've already agreed to do two more. The second one's already been shot. Mike Tyson's in the second one. Ooh, as well wow. as uh, Mountain from Game, Game of Thorns. Game of- those are the two stars of the second, or Game of Th- uh, Thrones. So Thrones. I don't watch the show. I've just heard about yeah. that. <laughs> right. I don't watch it either. <laughs> okay. yeah, I don't watch it either. All I watch is wrestling, up. man, and MMA. I'm kind of obsessed with those two subjects. Is it, <laughs> so, you know, uh, you, you talk you talk about MMA and you talk about wrestling. Are you a fan of boxing at all? Uh, actually, I do like boxing. I actually uh, entered that contest to fight uh, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, that took. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard about that pay per view that took place earlier this year, but my contest entry video to fight him got almost sixty thousand views. And wow. the promoters were actually going to – it was a deal where Roy Jones Jr. was going to box a fan. So, I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah. It was, it's, uh, it was on a pay-per-view. It was, real big. Uh, it was real big. That was early in the year. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt Angle fought Rey Mysterio on the pay-per-view. But actually yeah. the uh, promoters got in contact with me about it, and they said the only reason they didn't give me the fight was uh, the athletic commission – would not book me in the fight because of the weight difference between Roy Jones Jr. and I. But apparently that's the match they wanted. Roy Jones Jr. was even interested in the fight because my promo video got so many hits. I mean, the guy that he ended up fighting, who got knocked out in two rounds, mm-hmm. I don't even think he had 10,000 hits. Mm. Pardon me? That's he lasted longer than Punk. A random yeah, hand going to <laughs> but, yeah, 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 he did. But no, I like bo- I respect boxing. I'm actually kind con- like I'm continuously trying to become a better boxer. Um, and that I when I when I applied for that Roy Jones Jr. fight, I took it seriously. I actually got a private boxing coach, so I started training seriously in boxing for two weeks, um, hoping that I would get that fight. I'm not saying I would have beaten Roy Jones Jr., but like I was going in it to try my best to beat him. But, uh, no, I like boxing. I'm uh, definitely not as big of a boxing fan as I am wrestling, though. Mm-hmm. Well, you want, want to give a shout-out to, uh, and of course, you know, Larry Holmes, a good friend of ours. We did some work to him, been in his house. Uh, dude has huge, hand, huge hands. <laughs> big dude. Yeah, oh, I don't doubt see, it. Uh, yeah, uh, good, Larry Holmes. Good guy, man. Good friend of ours. Good dude, man. Um, <clears throat> we'll mention this, too. Fan questions. Hannibal. List your five, your top five horror movies. And then another question is, list some of the worst horror movies. Oh, God. (laughs) There's too many bad ones to really list. 
I, I can't even tell you the worst ones because there's so many bad ones out there. I don't want to leave out any that. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you the worst ones, but uh, the top five, I don't know, without being in any particular order, I would say uh, The Exorcist is up there for sure. The first Halloween, uh, that's one of my favorites. Those two, I guess, are my two like top favorites that I would say. I wouldn't really put anyone, other ones up in that category. But those are my two favorites. Uh, off the top of your head, uh, bad horror movies, like this horrible. Uh, what's that one? Uh, uh, a lot of the modern stuff I don't like. Uh, but what was the one where uh, they had, like, The Village? The Village was really bad. I didn't like that one. I just saw that yesterday. Really? Yes, it was. <laughs> it was wait, is that yeah, my girlfriend the, uh, was watching it, and I watched it with him. And they, oh, my God, that shit was horrible. Oh, I saw it. Is that the one with Shyamalan? Uh, uh, no, Shyamalan. It's, the one with yeah, the twin si- it's the one with the twin sisters. Oh, this, okay, that one. Of, okay, I yeah, she, she going to the, the uh, Japanese forest. That's supposed to be oh, with gosh. people who commit suicide. It, it, it's dumb. Don't even waste your time. It got like ten. It's like ten percent on Rotten Tomato too. It, it's don't even waste your time. It was dumb. So and yeah. uh, the Hannibal the Beginnings one is good. I forget exactly what the name. The one that shows him when he's young. What oh, the heck that, was that? What was that okay. called again? Yeah, was I, that, think I, was got, I think it was called Hannibal, Hannibal Beginnings. Cause I know yeah, Red Hannibal Dragon yeah. is the third one. That one's a great one. Right. That one's very, uh, very. Oh, and uh, the Halloween, the remake by Rob Zombie is very good. Yeah. So there's four. No. Nope. Part two. Part no, two no, I well. haven't seen. I don't think I've seen part two. But no, don't, uh, don't, Halloween don't see part two. two. Don't know see it. No. Yeah. Matter of fact, do you see it so you can add it to the <laughs> to the bad <laughs> list. <laughs> that and uh, uh, I know it's better. Uh, Halloween season of the witch part three to one eight. Oh, uh, the like best thing about that there. one is the song. The, yeah, the, the song exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's a really uh, cool dude. song. Actually, I like that song, but that's the only <laughs> thing I liked. It didn't even make sense that that movie. Like what, it what, had really? nothing to do with it. Oh man, Clay, uh, a Game Boy. I know this year already with horror movies. Go to uh, let, uh, let Hannibal know your. Yeah, your top three or five horror movies. Oh, my top, my top three or, or movies that's out now. Horror I've seen movies. all the horror movies that's out now. Oh, my yeah, my top movies. three. Well, of course it would be like Nightmare on Elm Street, the original one, not that remake they did. That was horrible. Oh God, all um, the remakes have been bad. Yeah, um, the original Halloween is is definitely really really good. Um, I'm a big fan of that one, and uh, it's a tie between the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And uh, it's another Toby Hooper um, movie. It's called The Fun House. It's not really that scary. It's real suspenseful, but it's just it has a it has a good premise and the way that he used the camera angle and stuff. And it's very creepy, especially people who are afraid, afraid, of afraid of clowns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're afraid of clowns and stuff, it's it's really. But um, they they like one of my top three. They, I have a whole, you know. Petra of them, but yeah, I'm saying that's, that's a whole other story. Well, what we will do for part two, Hannibal, and, and we do we do something called DLC episodes where we talk nothing wrestling, we talk about other things. When we have a next movie episode, we'll try to get you on. We can talk all horror movies. I know that's a big thing. Halloween's coming up. I know we had a Candyman on our show, Tony Todd. Uh, very creepy. And talk to him in person. You, you know what? I'll even throw this one in. Now that you mentioned it, you wanted sure. five Leprechaun, the original oh. Leprechaun. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. you gotta love that one. <laughs> when yeah, I was younger, original. I thought it was. When I was older, I even liked it. But Jennifer Aniston was in that, and yeah, he was a spooky little character. <laughs> yeah, not the remakes. He, he was in space. He was in the hood. Oh God. Uh, I was a big enough was fan that I too. saw all the remakes, but the first nothing came close to the first one. The, the, yeah, the question first is, one was... Annabelle, have you did you get to watch the other remake, the one with Hornswoggle? That no, I heard about it. Did it actually come out? Yeah, it, yeah, it did out. come out. 
and uh, yeah, I didn't hear good things about it. Hornswoggle doesn't strike me as someone that's a legitimate scary person. I don't know if he has the, the you know, I think the re, the first leprechaun actually had that in him a little bit, was a little crazy. I don't know if Hornswoggle has that side of him. He's well, kind of uh, Warwick, Warwick Davis, the guy who plays the original leprechaun. He was actually kind of upset because he was like, you know, I'm still alive and I'm still acting. They could have came and got me to redo it. Instead of just rebooting it with him, he was actually very upset about that. You can Google well, it was a like WWE that. film, from what I understand, and Hornswoggle was under contract at that time, so mm-hmm. that's probably the only reason was possibly to get Hornswoggle over. Which I don't, I don't know if, uh, like, I didn't even hear about it coming out. So obviously, it may not have been that successful. I don't know for sure, but uh, is it, has it been any WWE films that's done anything? I I like the one I saw the one where John Cena was an amateur wrestler or something. I think that's the only one I've yeah, seen. Yeah, with Danny Glover. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Yeah, that one Glover. is the only one I saw, and I didn't mind that one. But that's because I'm an, an amateur wrestler. Right. And any so movie about our, it, I'm gonna like. Yeah, we're amateur wrestlers, so that 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 hits the soft spot for us. Other than that, the, the chaperone and, and the, the see no evil one and two, and they got one coming out now. The fan just, uh brought it up. Uh, interrogation, I think, is, comes came out today with Edge and Lana, Rusev's uh, wife. I don't know, but yeah, they must long... be doing decent in uh, because it's the f- they keep putting out more films, so I guess they're uh, making money. So good for the wrestlers if they're getting roles. That's all I have to say about that. But I, have I? I don't really have any interest in watching any of those movies. But that's. Nothing against uh, WWE. Smart man. Smart man. <laughs> well, I know we getting pressed for time, and I know we got to get ready to do the plug party real quick. So, well, he, Jack, he, I know he, you he'll, he'll set him up. Plug, yeah, he'll, he'll do the uh, plug party again, I know. Uh, got to talk real quick. Um, your acting career, Hannibal, I know you did, you've done some acting. Um, shout out to your documentary, Hannibal, which has had won awards back in 2013. Um Talk to us about your documentary uh, real quick, and then also talk to us about your acting career and the uh, sci-fi series that you was in. Uh, my acting career is just getting going. I've only been doing it the past three years. Uh, I'm doing a role actually this Friday. Uh, but, yeah, I'm getting roles here and there uh, in mostly Canadian films. Uh, but I'm really enjoying it, so... That's an area of my career that I would like to uh, continue to get better at and continue to to grow, Spe- uh, particularly for like action movies, because I think I could be good in that. Um, because I know how to do. I'm actually good at absorbing punishment, surprisingly. So, and in some of these fight scenes that I've been in. You have to fight. You have to do these scenes like over and over and over and over and over again. So you you have to be able to take some punishment. But uh, but yeah, no. This is Hannibal. It won uh, three awards at the 2013 Los Angeles Movie Awards. That was a documentary about uh, the health struggles that I had at one point. Since that came out, I've overcome all those health struggles and. Yeah, I, I did have a role in a Canadian sci-fi series. I was in three episodes of that. I've been in uh, a couple other Canadian movies. So, yeah, my career is slowly... Uh, I'm slowly getting better at the acting thing and getting more jobs here and there. Hmm. Thank you, okay. Go ahead, Game Boy. Go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and take over and ask the last question before the plug party. Well, the only last question I wanted to ask, and, you know, I just wanted to get your honest opinion on this. Out of all the stories that you've you've heard and, and that you've you've interviewed, I know you got some, some, some laughs, some cries, and what was the most impactful story, uh, probably like the saddest one, that you heard from a performer, either a wrestler, referee, manager, what was the saddest one that you heard that kind of resonated with you that, that you know, you kind of took with you and, and, and you know, really kind of just was there? 
The saddest one is actually from one of my latest shoot interviews with uh, Quebecer Pierre, who was uh, Jean-Pierre Lafitte uh, in WWE as well. Uh, and it was just, it was just sad because uh, basically he was three-time WWE Tag Team Champions as the Quebecers when he was younger. Um, made some bad decisions, uh, had a falling out of, with the company in the late nineties. And then, um, uh, basically went back to the independent scene, uh, worked on the independent scene for a lot of, for a lot of years. And then he thought he was really going to try and give the WWE another run. So what he did was he, uh, quit his job he had a couple good jobs in montreal and a wife who was pregnant with his kid and moved to england to wrestle full-time where you only make about 60 pounds a night which is like the equivalent of like i don't know a hundred dollars american maybe so just to give one last shot at wwe and uh he tried really hard to go to go to WWE, came up with a whole storyline idea and everything. And when he got his tryout, uh, he drove from Montreal, I guess, to uh, Connecticut, wherever the Mohegan Sun Arena is. And uh, one of the things they told him to do was shave his head. He had spent a lot of time to uh, get his hair done really cool, so like almost immediately shows up. They don't like his hair, so he has to shave his head. Then uh, they give him a match. The match doesn't go well. He was supposed to have another match the second night, but the, fir- the match the first night went so bad that they didn't give him a second match at the SmackDown tapings. So he had basically... That was his last opportunity. He would have been in his late 30s at that point, so he basically given up everything he had to dedicate himself to wrestling. And he was a very good wrestler uh, as far as actual wrestling ability goes. And he has a good size on him and everything. But he just dedicated and sacrificed so much only to have his tryout be a total failure and have him being treated like total garbage by WWE, not even giving him a second match the, the next night. So that was really sad to me just that he had made all those sacrifices and the ending of it was so horrible. They, they basically just made him shave his head, went and had the match didn't turn out well. And then he had to drive all the way back instead of going to Philadelphia the next night for SmackDown. He had the long drive back to Montreal from Connecticut. So I can only imagine how depressing that would be. So, so that was very sad to me because, um, I know how hard it is to to try and get a a job in the WWE. It's really the only place where you can make good money these days. And that was his last chance. So I just thought that was a sad way for him to kind of uh, end it with WWE. But I'm glad that I know he went through a depressing time after that. But since then, he's pulled himself back together. So to me, that was the saddest. Thank you for sharing that story. We greatly appreciate it. You know, a lot of times we we hear about the great things and the great stories, but rarely you hear about the stories like that that resonate with you. And that's why I asked you because that's usually the ones that stick with you the most. Is, is the stories where you wish it could have changed, but you know, is you know, is out of your hands. So we thank yeah. you for that for sharing that. Tech. Um, I want to mention this before, uh, Hannibal, we let you do your final plug party and we let you go because I know you have to go in and work out. And go I out. do. I got to do You're legs to tonight. Well, I like to train when there's no one in the gym. It's <laughs> when you have your best <laughs> workouts. You, and, and while you train, you got you got to listen to the Rocky Four soundtrack. Everybody listens to that when he works oh, out. Oh man, uh, well I got the I got the Rocky, the best of Rocky on. I have that. I'm sure you guys have it too. Oh, of course. Cool. The album they put out. I've seen all those. Yeah. You asked me for the box fan. I you, you I couldn't even count how many times I've seen the Rock, 
the Rocky movies, but those are actually very motivational movies to me. Uh, oh. Like, never give up. You always have to fight. I have to, yeah. I, I, um, Game Boy's been on my case about this for, since it came out. I, I have yet to watch Creed, and I, I have it here at the house, so I definitely have to watch it. Oh, I, I saw I, I saw that it. one in the theaters. I was I actually more. liked it. I actually liked it. But again, I'm a and, uh, massive Rocky fan, so I could, would never say anything bad about what, about the movies. What, what, what is your favorite Rocky? All, all of them. Your favorite Rocky line? The, my favorite Rocky line? Yes. And to favorite to Rocky. me, it's never really been about the lines. Uh, it's never been about the lines. It's been about it just captured what it's like, what fighting is like, and training for. For fighting, I don't know if you guys know this, but Terry Funk did all the fight choreography for Rocky V, which is pretty oh. impressive. He choreographed all the fights for Rocky V. Oh, That's man. amazing. But like, even like in Rocky V, I just like it when, uh, you know, when Rocky's talking to uh, Tommy Gunn, he's actually giving advice that could be used in real fights when he's in, in Tommy Gunn's corner. So it's actually useful information even though that movie's considered like the worst of the rockies i i even like that one so but uh definitely rocky 3 is what got me into it all because of hulk hogan and here's another little bit of information do you know who it was between with uh to get the part of thunder lips in rocky 3 no who uh uh-uh. it was between hulk hogan and superstar billy graham Wow. And they ended oh. up going with Hulk Hogan because Hulk Hogan was taller. Wow. So, I never knew that. Yeah. Hey, I didn't know that either. Yeah, the they asked for pictures of both. The producers asked for pictures of both of them. And that was their ultimate decision, and it was just a matter of the height. So I thought that was cool when I found that one out. And, well, I will be watching Creed. Um, I'll be watching it's Price worth tonight watching. tomorrow. Yes, and uh, I know me and Game Boys are our favorites is Rocky IV. And, um, right, right, um, I don't know, Rocky what I hate about Rocky IV is the ending. The yeah, ending yeah, Rocky IV where, oh, let's all be friends and the big speech. That kind of ruins <laughs> it for me, but the trading is good. <laughs> that movie has 31 minutes of montages. Training montages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what trading is like know. here in Canada. When you're running, I run all year round. Like, I run wow. in the winter, and, yeah, that's what it's like here, running outside in the winter. Your beard is full of ice. Your eyelashes freeze together. you got to run in boots and a big coat. <laughs> yeah. That's just like having weights. I'm all, yeah, that's just like having weights on, then. Oh, definitely, yeah. but, yeah. Well, with that, um... If you ran into Kevin Owens, I know you're going to be talking about this uh, in the next Hannibal TV. We'll definitely be checking it out. If you ran face-to-face Kevin Owens right now, what would be the first thing you would do and you would say? I'm not going to comment on that until I until I make my, my post about him because one of the wrestling fans out there brought it to my attention uh, Recently, that he made claims that he trained me, which I oh, yeah. thought was very comical. Cool. Uh, so I obtained a copy of the video. I'm pretty good friends with Rob Feinstein. Yeah, good guy. And good guy. Uh, yeah, so I guess yeah, you're gonna have to, to to hear my response on that. But what what do you guys? Who do you guys think would win in a shoot fight <laughs> between Kevin Owens and I? I'll ask you that. Well, well actually, well, I think yeah, I got my not. money on you. Yeah, I, I've, I've met Kevin Steen and actually talked to him before. Matter of fact, right, li- literally right before, matter of fact, one of his last indie appearances, right before he went to E. Um, it was right. at CZW, and um, it was at another promotion that we talked, and I'm like, this, <laughs> you you would kill him <laughs> straight up. And we, we, we talked straight up. We thought Kevin Owens would beat you, we would tell you, but yeah, I got, I got you. We, we we saw your fight with Lanny Poffo, uh, another, another guy of ours in the business who uh, supported us. He almost broke his arm. So, well, do you know what I did to Lanny Poffo's shirt in that match? One of the reasons why he was mad at me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? It, why he was mad at me? Well, no, that. actually, we don't. We, we we did see the fight, but um, we, we didn't. What happened know that was I okay. I didn't know that his uh, luggage was lost. 
his luggage was lost by the uh, airport. So he wrestled me in his street clothes. But when I got in the ring, I just assumed that, okay, he's re- he's done some weird stuff for us before. He's wrestled in bare, barefoot. Like, he's not the, like, there's stuff that's a little bit strange about him. So seeing him standing in the oh, ring in his street clothes is not you really know. that strange to me. And what basically happened is I ripped off his shirt in the match, but I didn't know that it was the only shirt that he had because his luggage was lost. So that's why he was mad at me. So, <laughs> so it, was a, it was a pure accident, but I ended up giving him a shirt. We had Great North Wrestling shirts there, so we gave him a couple Great North Wrestling shirts. So it was all cool in the end, but he... But anyways, what would happen if I was in the ring with Kevin Owens? Do you think I'd let him keep the shirt on? <laughs> <laughs> but you also, you talk about what would happen in a shoot fight. Would Kevin Owens even be able to have a shoot fight? Because you can't fight MMA wearing a shirt. So I don't even think that he'd be able to do it because he obviously doesn't want to take off his shirt and the MMA governing bodies don't let you fight with shirts. Nope. So, uh-uh. Not um, at all. Well, well Hannibal, those are some things to a, take into consideration. <laughs> Hannibal, it's, it's been an honor and a pleasure to, to have you on our show. Uh, yeah, to talk, of course, about your career, movies, TV. Got to bring you back on for part two. Um, and go ahead one more time. Let everybody know how to follow Hannibal TV and the outcome of appearances. Well, thehannibaltv.com is the website of the Hannibal TV. Uh, There's match links on there, shoot interview links, all the information about uh, Great North Wrestling, which is the uh, main wrestling company in Canada. And my Twitter's at Devin Hannibal. Uh, But all the links are on thehannibaltv.com, including the YouTube link. And our YouTube channel is called The Hannibal TV. All of our shoot interviews are on there, shoot interview clips, full match videos. You can see matches featuring... Terry Funk, Kevin Nash, Psycho Sid, AJ Styles, Abdullah the Butcher, many, many more famous wrestlers are on that YouTube channel, as well as it's the official YouTube channel of Great North Wrestling, and some other Canadian wrestling companies also allow us to uh, post footage of their events on our channel, and even uh, the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Iowa, they let us cover the whole Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame this past July, cool. so uh, you can. There's a whole playlist for that if you want to see all the inductions. And we filmed the Impact Pro Wrestling show that night, which featured a match between Ricochet and Sammy Callahan. So there's great stuff cool. on the The Hannibal TV YouTube channel. So check that out. And I'm on Facebook, uh, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. Well, thank you, man. All right, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Yes, sir. Uh, Keep, uh, enjoy working out tonight. Watch some more crappy horror movies. And uh, I will. I'm all pumped up. To. You got me thinking about Kevin Owens. I'm ready to kill. <laughs> there you go. You you know, but the, man, the match I really want, Kevin Owens. Let, let's face it here. That that wouldn't even be a match. That'd be like not even a warm up. The match I really want is me versus Lesnar. That would be a match I want. That's a fitting challenge yeah. for me. Yeah, Lesnar's the real deal. Everyone's yeah. afraid of him. You got Dean Ambrose saying on Steve Austin's podcast, you won't work with him. Well, you know, if he was working with me, I wouldn't give him a choice to do what I want. But someone like Dean Ambrose, you know, what's he going to do? Brock Lesnar right. will just guzzle him. I have no fear of Brock Lesnar whatsoever. So I match up pretty close with him in size. Uh, it would be a very interesting match. Yes, it will be. We actually will pay to see it. <laughs> well, we'll see what time brings us. I do it MMA or wrestling. So we'll see what time shows us. You might yes, get your will. wish. I think you might get your wish. Yeah, okay. yeah we will see uh, Hannibal and Brock. We'll also see Hannibal and Roy Jones Jr. Maybe that can happen in Canada. Yeah. Get Roy Jones that to might go be to possible. Great yeah, get Roy Jones Jr. to go to a GNW. <laughs> in the box and the wrestling ring. Hey, something to see. I don't. Well, I don't know what his what his uh, fee is, but who knows down the road. 
but I actually respect Roy Jones. I was I was gonna fight him for the honor of fighting him, win or lose. Like that would be a massive honor. So that was why I did that. Brock Lesnar, it'd be an honor to fight him, but I do have some personal animosity with him. Uh, just because I guess you could say I'm jealous of him that he just has everything handed to him, but I still respect him. He's a mm-hmm. he's a he's a great wrestler, but I would like to fight him, either fight him MMA or wrestle him, chop the hell out of him, smash him as hard as I can with forearms, uh, <laughs> test his amateur ability because I have seen his amateur matches. He does a lot of holding, a lot of stalling, likes to grab the head and like just try and hold it. But the first thing I would do is if I ever got booked in a match against Lesnar is go to Dan Gable, get his advice on how to fight him. Yes, hit him, Dan. Hit him, Dan. And we, we had um, not again, but we had uh, Ken Shamrock here on the show, and uh, Shamrock said he thought Brock had two left feet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Dan Severin said the same thing. So, uh uh, well, know, I actually they, beat they Dan respect. Severin. That's another match you could find on the Hannibal TV. Hannibal versus uh, Dan Severin. I actually hold a victory over him, and we also did a shoot interview with him. And uh, Dan Severin's a great guy too. Yeah, really he tough is, yeah. guy. Like, there's a guy that like when I beat on people in the ring, some people like literally try and run away or try and cover up, try and avoid it. But Dan Severin just takes it. Uh, he's a tough guy. It's no wonder. And just the sheer amount of MMA fights he's had. The guy's crazy. Yeah. I think he's had something like 130 fights. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Still, still look good for his age. To, and, and and a lot of a lot of the the most tough, the most toughest guy the toughest guys sound so cool and calm on the phone. Ken, Dan Severin, um, Boss Root, and all of them guys just sound nice, cool, regular guys. Until you see him in person, he pretty much roll you up. <laughs> you, know, exactly. you know, talking to Dan, you want to know that this man is he's a dangerous guy. He can basically roll you up and hurt you in many ways. That's not only how it is, it is. But um don't want to hold you any longer. It's been an honor for you to come on to the show. We've had much fun. Can't wait for part two with Hannibal. Enjoy your workout. We'll definitely be in touch. Thank you. See you next time. Everyone subscribe to the Hannibal T V. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank Everybody, you, that was Devin, Hannibal Nicholson. Please check him out once again. Look up Great North Wrestling in Canada, The Hannibal TV, <clears throat> on Twitter, at Devin, that is D-E-V-O-N, Devin, Hannibal. Of course, you should know how to spell Hannibal, and if you don't, don't make it public knowledge and just use Google, at Devin Hannibal on Twitter. Check him out. Good dude. Definitely heard great things about him. Um, working with Bruce Hart and everyone else. Good guy, NFC Game Boy. Thoughts of a Hannibal.